Hey guys, um, today I'm going to kind of explain my final decision not to buy the $1,000 packs. I have no idea when this video would be made, but it is the night before the release of the 28th on November 28th, which I think is a Monday. Yep, uh, today is Sunday, the 27th, so tomorrow is Monday. And I am not going to buy any. Now, I'm going to explain my rationale. It is going to be a little bit unique and I've been wavering on the product. Now, the first time I saw the product, I was not deterred by the price tag, but I was deterred by eventually by the reaction from the community. And I understood all that. So I understand the reserve list, which I don't believe is real. I have never believed the reserve list was a real contract. I think any first year in law school student is going to know that that's not a real contract. It is more of a marketing gimmick, if you will. I mean, it is exactly that, a marketing gimmick. It's been nothing but that. However, a lot of people did believe it, and it has been repeated by Mero every other year, essentially. And if you repeat something long enough, people will start to believe it. So they believe the reserve list because it's been repeated many, many, many years. Now, the other thing was the price point. I understand the price point is very high. People are looking for value. They're looking for cheap cards. And I believe this is not the product that most people can afford. The issue for me was I knew I would not come to a decision until basically the night before when I'm done calculating. So I paid all my property tax, I paid all my school taxes. I, I don't go to school, but it's, you know, when you're a property owner, you pay taxes. Paid probably over 20,000 in taxes, and that doesn't include the individual taxes or my business taxes, which are due in April. That's just for property I own. I own a, another smaller piece of property that is also being taxed to oblivion because the value has gone up and yeah you know dual property ownership probably not a good idea at this moment in time with the property and the taxes being as high as they are but it is what it is right and i calculated how much money i spent on fire emblem and in fact there was a there was a very interesting item i was bidding on and I'm lucky that I didn't win. I bid I bid too much on this. I, it was a sports card related item. And I got in trouble with Fire Emblem because I just kept bidding on stuff, you know, and it's just on eBay, it never ended. I also spent a lot of money on Inuyasha, which I didn't expect to spend any money on. I will be quite frank with you. I was not expecting to buy boxes of first edition Taisaga, which is the first set, which is basically a space first edition. I was not expecting to get five sheets. I was not expecting to really get involved in Inuyasha because it's been a long time since I've opened any packs of Inuyasha. I did not expect to get my distributor back this early given that I don't have a store and I assume my distributor because in the past they really cared about me having a physical store. Yeah, um, there's a lot of financial reasons but the main reason is I did the math, I did the thing you know, one of the, so all my company is safe, but there's one employee that's kind of outside my company. Uh, she does all the anime waifu artwork. She is a full-time employee. She lives in the Philippines. Uh, she gets paid a full-time salary. Uh, and I believe she gets paid very well, very, very well when you convert the money into Philippine pesos. And, you know, I don't want to cut her. So, to protect her, I'm not buying this product. Now you might think this sounds ridiculous and in my head it does, but when you look at the math I did, the first thing, if we get in trouble, so my employees are taken care of for the whole year, but she's kind of offering her own little, you know, she's not part of the marketing agency, but she gets paid by the marketing agency and her money is not in escrow and it's a lot. It's not a small amount of money. She works every day, 10, 10 hours a day sometimes seven days a week, right? Uh, she works very hard and basically I employed her as a full-time artist. Now she does have some other smaller clients. 
Uh, for all my employees, I encourage them to have side hustles. If their side hustle does well for them, hey, good. Good, you know, if they need to take some time off to do the side hustle or whatever, if she can get employment and get paid more for the projects she can work, I, I give her projects same re uh, way I treat Alexa up in New York. Um, and I'm doing the math, I'm doing the math, and this, you always do the worst case scenario, worst case scenario, like, and this is a scenario that is, if I buy a good chunk of these $1,000 packs, it is a scenario where I can't afford to pay her anymore and we have to let her go. Which would suck. And when you make promises to people, uh, especially employees, you have to keep them because they're reliant, you know, their livelihood. I know that C is getting married soon. Uh, I know she has like a whole nother persona. Like, you know, it's very interesting because again, she lives, so C's a remote, all my employees are remote now, but when I mean remote, I mean like I can still drive and see Norman, right? And I looked at it, I looked, I did the math in my head. I did all the expenses I expect to pay my distribution. I have another Pokemon distributor, even though he doesn't have a contract with me, I'm probably gonna spend a lot of money with him because he has older, he has vintage. I mean, it's, I, I guess it's called vintage product that I like. And it comes down to money. It always comes down to money and how much money you have and how much more taxes I have to pay. And you know, you gotta expect the really bad taxes this year. It's Joe Biden to the moon. So to make sure that she has a job for the rest of the year, I have to behave like when you're a boss and you have employees, you can't just spend money, you know, because if you get, let's say I play poker, I lose a bunch of money. Well, it's very bad for that employee in the Philippines uh, because I don't have no money. So I'm looking at things that I spend a lot of money on. Gotcha games, I suppose I, I'm going to try to reduce my spend there. And Yasha, Fire Emblem Cypher, I'm going to hopefully minimize my spend there and just really just kind of move on from those two games. You know, uh, I love those two games very much, but again, it wasn't really... I. I mean, to spend $25,000 to buy Emblem Cypher, the first video I got was, was was probably around my birthday of last year, so July. So less than five months I spent that amount of money on that game it is a little insane when you consider how much money I bought in Pokemon cards and Magic cards and boxes and buy list. You know, the money has definitely been very crazy. I have been spending ridiculous sums of money on collectible cards and I have to limit that. So my solution is definitely starts with a thousand dollar pack. I'm not gonna buy any of those. It's not because I'm gonna hold the line. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. It's not because I'm ethically or morally, and I, I don't care, right? It's financially, I don't think you can make money from this product that justifies the risk. And I want to mitigate risk right now because Again, when you're doing the math, there's one employee of mine that is at risk if things go wrong. And that would be my artist, right? Because again, the art is really for me, for my own enjoyment. And it is a very expensive thing to hire somebody full time, even if they're in the Philippines, to do art on call every single day of the week. I thought it was just kind of cool that I could be a patron in that way, that I could you know, hire somebody to develop her art skills, do things, and you know, again, it's expensive as hell, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I so there are things I gotta work on: gambling, poker. I have to not go to no poker rooms uh, next year. That's my goal. So I made a list of things that I can do to help make sure that she has a job, and that's my motivation: is really to keep all my employees well paid, uh, even be able to offer them raises. I give them a raise this year, of course. And buying a thousand dollar pack is not part of that. A thousand dollar pack is about 500 Pokemon packs for me or roughly 400, depending on the type of pack. I can't justify it. I cannot justify it. And if I can't justify it, the risk, um, I can't do it anymore. And it's not just that, it's Fire Emblem Cypher. I'm going to really, really try hard not to go on eBay no more. 
or Amazon, even though they re-allowed me to buy stuff on Amazon. To re I might buy some here and there for celebration, but not like every day. I was buying the stuff every single day for my distribution. Yeah, I need to make sure that I don't take as much distribution anymore. I'm kind of over it. I might even try to get out of my contract after 90 days opt out. It's not 90 days yet, so I do have some time to think it over. And yeah, the most important thing for me next year is to keep all my employees and even hire a new employee to help me with my live streaming. And employees, there's nothing more expensive than an employee. I can tell you from the, ground, the time you spend training them, the time you spend with them, and also obviously the salary they pay. They constantly, they need, you're, you are providing them a living standard. And you, that is a big responsibility. And I think, you know, now I look at the, I've calculated, calculated, calculated. Um, I would love if I had some self-control and I didn't have to play gotcha games and all this stuff, but we'll see if I can, I can temper that. But if I buy this pack, this would be a very bad decision going into 2023 and it would already put her at risk. And that's something that would be really, really bad for me to do. So just to give more cushion, cause you know, you always want margins and cushion. I'm going to not buy this pack for not because I'm holding the line or cause I hate Rudy Chan. I love Rudy Chan. I hate Brian Kibler. I love Brian Kibler. I hate magic. I don't, I'm holding the line for me personally. It was a personal decision. It is a personal economic per responsibility that I have to other people, which prevents me from buying this product because even though I can still buy the product and you know, technically, if I can make money from it, I don't know. There is a risk level that I don't think is fair. Now, many of you guys might say, oh, you know, why don't you put her money in escrow? That's just not how we work. Um, it's, it's hard to define. We've been, uh, I've hired her as an artist for at least two years now. So we have like 700 images together um, that we worked on. It's tough, guys. Uh, it's tough when you own a business, you can't mess with people's livelihoods, right? And by gambling, by playing gotcha games. Like to me, it, one story I tell you is my uh, sister was going with her uh, husband, so my brother-in-law and my, I didn't have a nephew, I had a niece at the time. They were going to Japan for two weeks to have fun. They obviously didn't buy me anything because that's my sister, right? Why would she buy me five of them? But anyway, I was gonna go with them and I was training my employees to do sales, to do, you know, account executive things. And they were all so bad at it. And I could have gone, I had a lot of money and it would have been okay for me to go. I just knew that like, by the time I came back, the company could be in shambles and then they would have to lose all, they would all lose probably their jobs. So I decided not to go to Japan. I really regret, I mean, I don't regret not going. It's just kind of sucky when you own a business. When employees take off, like in the holidays, guess who does the extra work? It's me, it's always me. And you own the business. And that's just part of owning the business. It's hard owning a business. And in terms of like, all my employees, they have really great lives. My life has been a little tampered. And again, you can say, oh, you don't have to do but like, you do. <laughs> now I'm gonna lie to you. You do, there are people working just as hard. as right now, it is very late at night. And I'm still working because that's what I am. I'm workaholic. I don't know, maybe we can discuss it in a different, essentially what I'm saying is I'm not picking a political side I'm not agreeing with Rudy. I don't believe he's actually not gonna buy it. I believe he will buy it. I'm not agreeing with the casual 99% of Magic players. I'm just saying for me personally right now, there are much more important things that I have to make sure are financially stable and it's only fair for me to work to put the money in escrow for her, my artist, so I can tell her, hey, you're good to go. The reason that I didn't do it in the past is he also has other clients and stuff, so you know, she wasn't as dependent on me as she is now. Now she's very dependent on me paying her. Um, when before, I think she was just a student and now she has a lot more financial. It, it's, 
it's difficult to explain because there's a lot of you know back and forth and the back and and it's just difficult to explain. Anyway, hi guys.